So for the last year or so, there has been a big discussion and debate regarding the overall health of the comic book market. I have seen videos and been part of discussions over this last year where people have cited the fact that a local comic shop closed as evidence that the overall market is headed for a downturn. I've been part of and seen discussions where people have cited the abundance of variants as evidence that the market is headed for a downturn. And in some cases, people harken back to what was happening in the 90s with all of the variants, the foils, the embossments, the special editions, the limited editions, the variant this, the variant that. And, and they looked at the availability of variants then and they look at it now and they see similarities. And for that reason, there is a lot of belief that the market is headed for a downturn. Now, you, if you guys have been part of this channel, you know my thing isn't to say that someone is right or wrong. That's not what I do. But what I am suggesting is that maybe we need some hard data, some hard facts that we can layer on top of the anecdotal evidence that we see. And these hard facts may allow us with the combination of the anecdotal to make some informed predictions about what's actually happening. And so that's the point of this video is I want to bring forth some data that I've been able to find uh, regarding the health of the comic book market. And my goal isn't necessarily to say that things are good or things are bad because I don't know that you can make a whole lot of real decisions from a single data point or even a couple of data points. So my hope is that I'll be able to do this type of video, this comic book you know, market update video on a, on a regular basis, maybe once per month where I'm able to pull together some numbers and maybe over time, when we have two, three, four months of data, maybe we can actually see some trends and patterns that may actually tell us what's happening in the comic book community. We may see that things are stable or that things are declining and that the anecdotal evidence that we have is indeed correct. But let's do the videos, let's pull the data together, and then let's look at it and see what it tells us. I hope that you'll enjoy this video. First, let's look at the overall comic market. Comic sales are up 9.66% in October of 2018 versus October of 2017. Overall, for the month of October, it was a pretty good month in sales and actually builds upon a small increase of 0.75% for comics that were seen in the month of September. As we take a step back, comic sales are up 2.13% year over year. Now, this might not seem like a lot, but given the weak start to the year, this small increase is important and it may signal a strong trend for the remainder of the year. Stay tuned because I'll be giving you some caveats that may provide some additional and helpful context to the numbers that I just mentioned a few moments ago. Now that we've looked at the overall health of the market, let's turn our attention to publisher market share. Marvel just managed to retain the top spot by edging out DC by 3.74%. As of October, Marvel retained 34.22% of the market, with DC capturing 30.48% of all comics sold in the month of October. Image was a distant third at 12.62%, and IDW managed to secure 4.03% of the comic market. I'll post up the other publishers' numbers so that you can see how this entire situation plays out. 
The market share percentages and overall numbers that I mentioned earlier are based upon comics distributed via Diamond to specialty comic shops. Diamond is the largest distributor of comics, but they do not represent the entire comic book market because other distribution channels may be used by publishers. In addition, these numbers that I'm focusing on are really derived from just North American sales. All right, so now let's take a look at the top 10 and bottom five comics sold during the month of October. Yes, I'm only going to be looking at roughly 15 comics out of 500 on my list, but my hope is to basically provide you with some context for what's moving in the market, and more importantly, what's driving those market share numbers that we discussed just a few moments ago. The top 10 list is a mixture of DC and Marvel books with one image book thrown in for good measure. All the DC and Marvel books had a cover price of $3.99, and the one image book had a cover price of $2.99. At the top of the list is Batman 56 from DC, which sold roughly 108,000 copies. In the second position, Walking Dead number one, this is the 15th anniversary variant from Image, sold 106,000 units. In third place, Spider Getton number one from Marvel at 105,000 units. Fourth place, Batman issue number 57 from DC at 95,000 units. Next up, Spider Gwen, Ghost Spider number one at roughly 90,000 units. Sixth position, Heroes in Crisis number two at 88,000 units. In seventh place, Venom number seven from Marvel at 87,000 units. And in eighth place, Justice League number 10 from DC, 84,000 units. In ninth and 10th place, we have more of the Spider family, Amazing Spider-Man number seven and number eight, both selling roughly 83,000 units. All right, so now let's look at the bottom five books out of 500. All five of these books sold roughly 1,200 copies and there was you know, a couple of books here and there that kind of separated these at the bottom of the list. At position number 495, we have Oh Snap, It's Kim and Kim number three from Black Mass Studios. Next up, 496, we have High Heaven number three from Ahoy Studios. In position 496, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 31 from Boom Studios. Next, Belladonna Fire Fury, number nine from Avatar Press. This was one of the more expensive books on the list at $5.99 cover price, and they still managed to sell roughly 1,200 copies. At $4.98, we have Venom First Host, number four. This is a little bit of a shocker that this book managed to sell so few copies, uh, but Venom First Host, number four, is uh, at the bottom of the list. Number 500, Doomsday Clock number six, rounding out the top 500, again, with roughly 1,200 units sold. It's important to mention that these are the units that were distributed via Diamond to comic specialty shops, but these don't represent all the books that may have been sold. There is a chance that anywhere from five to 20% of these titles are unsold in a comic shop somewhere in the United States. All right, so we're gonna stop there and we're gonna wrap up this episode of Comic Book Market Watch. Stay tuned because we'll be doing this again next month when we have numbers in for November. The hope, of course, is that this trend of, of positive sales for comics will continue into the month of November and certainly into the month of December, but only time will tell if that is indeed the case. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so, and if you wish, leave a comment in the comment section if you wanna chat about anything mentioned in this video. 
As always, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it.